Hey YouTube, Nickel and Diamond here again. So what we're going to do today is a project to uh, feed the trolls out there just to demonstrate that we do indeed know how to uh, tint cars. So we're going to be uh, working, myself and uh, Brezhnev. It's still Brezhnev today, right? Good enough. Um, so we're going to uh, go ahead and do the uh, process on camera here just to demonstrate that yes, you can indeed um, tint the car by yourself at home. Lots of other videos about this kind of topic, but uh, what we're demonstrating is that uh, it's really not that hard to do. First step is clean the window. Second step, clean the window. Third step, shocker, clean the window. So we'll, uh, we'll demonstrate basically how we're doing this. The key to success um, is using enough soap in the solution in the sprayer that you're using. So you can see the green tint there maybe a little bit. Um, that's going to give us uh, much, much um, better slipperiness to both the backside of the film that we're going to be using as well as um, to the glass and between the glass and the film so that we can manipulate it. squeegee step is really really important because you want to make sure that all of the dust gets pushed down um, to the base um, of the window and ultimately wiped out of the bottom uh, window sweeper with a paper towel. Um, that way you have absolutely zero chance of contaminating the film with dust and dirt because um, each of those will scar up your film as you're trying to run over them with the squeegee for the next steps. So we'll finish squeegeeing the window and then come back. After it's clean, you need to wipe, spray down the entire outside of the window so that you can get the film to stick. With all tint, there is a clear protective film covering the adhesive and you want to be very careful when you're unrolling this to figure out which side there is um, the protective film on because you want the protective film side to face toward you so that you put the actual tint side against the glass that you're looking at while you're working from the outside to match the tint shape to the shape of the windows underneath. What that does is essentially allow you to make the negative of the window and it allows you to match up the tint to the shape of whatever the interior trim is from the outside without trying to do it when you're trying to get everything stuck together um, and trying to get the adhesive to cure against the glass and trying to squeegee out all of the air. So you're really just making the, the whole process easier on yourself by working and cutting the film to shape on the exterior of the glass. Another way that this helps you is especially if you've got a lot of sun heat um, coming down like we happen to have here in the Sonoran Desert, you can take advantage of that heat to help warp and shape the tint um, to the actual shape of the window because normally a flat film, like if you tried to wrap a flat piece of paper around a glass vase that has a lot of curves to it, you're not going to get a smooth surface. Um, the same thing happens with the tint when you're trying to wrap it around curved glass. So what you want to do is use heat, either a heat gun or the heat of the sun or whatever, um, to help you warp the tint to shape to the window it's going to be going on. So where he's aiming, you can see there, is right along the trim piece, all the way down. You can see how the film is kind of 
stuck loosely, but we're making sure that the uh, backing side is always facing toward us when we're working on the outside of the window um, because you have to cut the negative of the pattern for whatever the window is. So by doing that, when you take it around to the inside of the glass, it's a perfect fit. And in this case, you want to be sure you're paying attention. Thanks, helicopter. Awesome. better so now what he's gonna do is since we've cut all the way to the bottom and we've lined up the bottom of the film with the flat reference of the window trim strip on the outside he's going to cut around the outside um, to match the interior trim um, and that way he gets all of the glass covered and you don't see where the lines are after we're done and then we'll get some close-ups and then we'll just have a bunch of really good footage of people dancing around in fast forward. No pressure. So here we are looking at the final stages of trying to get the last of the air out. Let's see if I can Zoom in on what you're doing here. That issue we just discussed about the flat film and curved surface, this is exactly what happens. These are called um, tint fingers, basically. These air bubbles that keep cropping up that you have to try and press out. It causes a lot of problems because it's um, trying to return to its flat state and you're wanting it to force into a curved surface. So what it's what you have to do instead is add some additional heat to the film. You can heat the glass in this case from the outside. You can heat the film itself. You just need to um, help the film to actually cooperate. Um, sometimes you can use the tool to push it under the, some of the trim pieces, depending on how the interior of your car works, um, depending on what effects you're um, trying to go for. If you really like the uh, cheesy backyard limo tint with bubbles then you know you can just sort of leave it alone and call it good um, but it, you can see as as um, he's able to kind of pull the tint back carefully um, without wrinkling it he's able to get most of it taken care of um, and then I'll show you here in just another uh, few seconds um, another trick that you can use to help keep that finger from returning um, by basically just applying pressure to the base of the film um, and it works really really well in cars where you have um, the film kind of going down far enough where you can actually use this wedging technique. Um, it's not one that I think the uh, pros typically use, but that's because they're actually using heat guns and continually heating the film um, to help it warp to the shape before they add it. But they also don't have the uh, sun trying to help dry out everything, which causes all kinds of additional issues. First, we start by laying out this film. Once the film has been laid out and you've gotten all of the bubbles smoothed out from one side, slowly working your way to the other, um, that way you can maintain even adhesion to the glass. Um, what you're going to want to do is line up um, the film such that you have a little overlap on both edges so that you can trim both sides, then roll the window down slightly, then use the top of the glass um, to use as your kind of guide for trimming the film um, and that way you can get it straight 
relative to the glass and your shape will match every time. You do want to pay close attention however to the areas like this curved area up front um, on this window at the very very top because we couldn't get the film easily up behind that and had to do some cutting um, after we had already start la started laying in the film. So there's a lot of little factors you have to pay attention to when doing something like this. It's especially important here to be working from the bottom up. Um, and one of the things that we found actually that we aren't doing here but we did on the subsequent windows was that because of the way the window was put together there was a two layer um, inner dust sweeper, inner belt line sweeper um, so it was easiest to pull the door panels off and I think that generally goes for any car that you're doing this on. Um, in the Miata it actually wasn't so bad because it's just a single rubber strip that you get to slip the bottom of the film in behind and then you slowly work your air out from kind of the center up and again the whole time trying to keep everything really well um, sprayed down so that you have plenty of soap and water because you want that soap, all them soap molecules to keep everything nice and slippery so that the film slides around until you push the air out. Here are some stills of the finished products on some of the windows and some shots from different angles just to show all the trolls out there that you can do this at home without all kinds of nasty bubbles. So there. Thanks for watching. Please like or dislike, comment and subscribe and let me know what you think of the video and uh, also what you think of the hopefully slightly improved voiceover audio quality.